an American band from the uh, classic Grand Funk lineup. And uh, this is a pretty straight ahead rocker. The rhythm guitar part is really simple. In fact, I won't use any tab or chord diagrams. It's pretty much just power chorded out. And so I'll just walk you through that and uh, explain how it's done. But then I will get into detail with the uh, intro solo, the harmony guitars, and then the uh, solo tag that's kind of on that part as well. And we'll get all the tab up on the screen going for sure. So we start off, we'll just cover the rhythm part first. We start off with some power chords. Um, I'm playing it 5-7-7 seven, seven for the D power chord, and I tend to play them all that way unless I switch to a fuller sound to get the third in there, which I'll explain in a bit. But for the intro, we're just traveling from a D power chord to a C power chord, B flat power chord down at the end of the neck, back to C, and D. So as you can see, I'm just kind of pounding away on uh, downstroke, solid eighth notes. And then we get into the more syncopated part. And uh, I've included the bass lick on guitar. A lot of people like to play that, so I've included it. Uh, but we're on the D power chord again, and we're playing. So again, I'm just playing sort of a uh, five chords, power chords with the octave in there on all of this, okay? And I like to play that with a down, up, down stroke so that it sounds really slicing. And then this is a hammer-on lick, which you can kind of see on the tab there. And of course, the bass actually plays that, but, you know, I think most people like to include it on guitar because it's fun to play. And then you just land a power chord. And it's easier if you do it like that. I like to do it with all three fingers, but it's probably easier to catch the power chord off of the hammer on, you know, if you just uh, do it with two fingers and then add the uh, pinky back in there. So again, that's back to D at the fifth fret, F at the eighth fret, and E at the seventh fret, and then back down to the third fret. And so on and so forth. And then we move into the, uh, the B section, the next section of it. And I like to widen out the chords a little bit here, kind of add the third in there. You can kind of hear that there's more, obviously more than one guitar on the recording. And uh, Mark Farner kind of throws in some subtle little ad-libs here and there, but you don't need to get too hung up on that. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm moving to a G chord, basically a power chord. You can power chord the whole thing if you want to, but I like to kind of add that third in there a little bit. So I'm playing this, again, all downstrokes. So again, it's all downstrokes and we've got a uh, G power chord. Again, as I said, you can just do power chords if you want to, but I like to bring in the third. So I'm not actually barring the whole thing. I'm just playing three, five, five, four, three on the uh, sixth string, five on the fifth string, five on the fourth string, and four on the third string. So make sure you're just kind of stroking those uh, strings in the back. And then I move to a D. Um, this is a, a bigger D chord, Jimmy Page style, so to speak. I've got five on the A string, and I'm barring seven, seven, and seven right across the next three strings. Get a little bit bigger chord that way with the third in there. And uh, we'll talk about how he adds his pinky to uh, the chorus a little bit later. So basically, we're just going... Move it down to the third fret. Back to the fifth fret. Mm -hmm. 
So we're moving from the G to the D to the C and back to the D. G again, D, and then move the shape all the way up to the eighth fret using your index finger as the pointer and we make it an F. A little syncopated part right there and then up to 10 for G chord. So we have And as you can see from the performance video, sometimes I like to pop down and play the... Uh... In fact, I kind of layered it that way on the recording. So that's nice once in a while, just an F power chord. One, three, three, and then three, five, five. It's a little heavier sounding right there. And then we move into the chorus, which is pretty much like the intro, but I'm using the uh, bigger chords with the third in there, as opposed to just that. And if you listen carefully to the recording on headphones, you know, like I said, there's more than one guitar in this mix for sure. But you'll hear that Mark Farner kind of adds little pinky bits <laughs> here and there where he makes some suspended chords. But it's nothing uh, super succinct or exactly the same every time. So I kind of play it like this. And you could even do that on the D chord if you wanted to, but in a uh, nutshell, what I did was I'm just grinding away on the D chord. Move to the C. I'm adding my pinky to the uh, sixth fret on the B string. And you don't have to play it exactly as I'm doing it or even as he does it, right? You can just kind of mix it up, like I said, however you want to. But it adds a little bit of color to it. And you can even do it on the D and the B flat if you wanted to. I think you get the idea. Just do whatever you want with it. And there you have it, right? At the end of the song, they obviously throw those uh, kicks in there where they're going. And you'll hear that little lick right at the end there. That's the uh, fifth fret on the uh, G string. And then a quick slide from seven to five on the D string. D string, third fret, sort of a quarter bend, or close to a half, and then just ending on a D power chord. Or you can play it up here if you want to, but I'm playing it second fret on the G string and the open D string. There you have it, the rhythm part from American Band. So uh, let's take a look at the lead work as well. So Mark Farner kicks it off with a very solid uh, lead intro on the song. It's obviously worked out and uh, it sounds great against those simple chords. <laughs> slow that puppy down <laughs> and uh, figure it all out. Okay, so here's the tab on the screen. There's a lot of hammer-ons and um, a lot of alternate picking as well, but uh, I think you'll be able to catch it if I play it slow enough. <laughs> So let's get into some detail with that though, uh, especially the second lick. You've got the intro lick, which is, and that's easy enough. It's got a hammer on and then you start uh, picking the note that's on the seventh fret. 
But then he has this. And you can see I've divided it up for you four even times on the tablature so you can uh, see it very clearly. But what you're doing is you're doing a hammer on with a down stroke. And the way alternate picking works, at least effectively works, is that that hammer on would technically be an upstroke of the pick if you were to pick it. So the next note that you do pick should be a downstroke. So you should be playing it down, down, up, down, down, up. And you should wind up on an upstroke, which sets you up to loop the lick around. That's probably the best way to do it and the most effective way. So we have... So I, I slice that with a downstroke again and then, then up, down, up. That's all pretty clear and should be uh, pretty easy to wrap your head around. But then he plays. So a good way to approach that, I start that with an upstroke. So again, you wind up with up, down, up, and then there's a very quick slide. And that should be down, up in your right hand. That kind of pattern where you're going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And of course, you're going back and forth between the fifth and the seventh fret. Not to get too crazy about it, but it's really important uh, in terms of playing it up to speed and making it sound nice and round the way he does. I've always gone into a lot of detail with, with picking technique with my students because it just seems like it helps out so much. So, uh, so bear with me for a second. <laughs> That's a little half step bend or semi half step bend. And then he plays. So that's a pull off right at the start, the set of 16th notes here. And uh, for me, the same rules apply to the game of alternate picking. If you're doing a pull off and you're starting with a down stroke, then where that pull off is would technically be an upstroke in your picks. So you want to play it down. That would be an upstroke. So you would play from the seventh fret on the D string, the remainder of the lick, with down, up, down, up, down, up, etc. And you can see it's just the economic way to do it. It works out really well that way. And then you just have the two notes at the end. So let's move to the main solo in the middle. It starts out with uh, dual guitars, two-part harmony, and uh, I consider the lower guitar to be guitar one. It doesn't matter. You can flip them on their head if you want to. Uh, but that first uh, guitar, guitar one, is played like so. <laughs> So let me slow that down. Again, you're going to employ some alternate picking on this for sure. And uh, as far as fingering right across those strings uh, that you just saw, just do what works best for you. You can use one finger and kind of roll it across the strings or two, whatever you want to do. I probably change it up from time to time when I play it. Uh, but let me play that one slow for you. So definitely some alternate picking once you get to the uh...
And then you've got the harmony guitar part on top, which is, of course, a harmony guitar part. And it's played like so. So let me do that one for you slow. And again, uh, feel free to use whatever fingers are best for you. It's pretty predictable what fingers you should be using, but uh, crossing the strings like that, some people like to just use one finger, like I said, and kind of roll across. Just do whatever's comfortable for you. That's kind of the fingering I like to use for it. And then the solo guitar, uh, which again, I consider guitar one to be the main one, takes flight with this. So let's talk about that. There's a little bit of a mystery, I think, surrounding that fast lick. So uh, I'll talk about that very uh, succinctly here, hopefully. But it starts off with a classic Chuck Berry style lick. So let's get into that and take it apart bit by bit, okay? We're on the G string and we're doing a full step bend. And then we're barring the B string and the E string at the 10th fret. And then coming back to the B string on 13 and it's a full step bend. So that's the 10th fret on the E string. And again, heavy dose of alternate picking here. And that's a pull off from 13 to 10. Again, alternate picking in the right hand. Now the lick that follows, I think, is kind of a mystery. Sometimes you hear it played like this. Or, you know, something like that. But if you uh, listen very carefully, if you slow this recording down, it's actually a set of five notes and he plays it like this. And that can be kind of tricky to play. I'm not sure how he ever came up with it, to be honest, but it's, it can be pretty tricky to play. And he plays it six times in a row, and then he plays this. So that's kind of a standard bluesy thing as well. Um, be sure to put a finger in front of the string that you're trying to bend, but you're trying to hold the 10th fret in place at pitch. And of course, you're pushing the B string up a whole step. Once you get close to pitch or on pitch, it's supposed to sound a little bit nasty and grungy. Uh, hold the pitch. Strike again. Hold the pitch. Strike it again and release it. And then pick it again. And you want those two notes to just grunge together the way he does it. Do it again. 10th fret on the B string, 12 on G, give it a bend on the 10th fret on the G string, and then park it on the 12th fret on the D string. So here it is, that whole little section, that whole little bit, nice and slow. I played that lick six times. <laughs> Can't tell I was playing it so slow. In any event, it is uh, six times. 
So there you go with uh, American Band from uh, Grand Funk and uh, some pretty cool little lead work from uh, Mark Farner. I hope you enjoyed the uh, lesson and uh, we'll see you guys soon.